What's up, people? Welcome to Hustle is for Life Motivation. This is the YouTube channel where we come together every single week and we bring on amazing guests to dissect their lives and their minds because we want to be just like them. We want to achieve holistic success in our lives. We want to be successful in every area of our lives. So we bring on people from all walks of life so we can find out, well, how do you get to be successful in that particular area, in their area of expertise? Tonight, I'm joined by somebody very special. She is a relationship and communication coach. So I'm really excited to talk to Erica. Her name is Erica Holston. She uh, is a coach, she's a speaker. She talks about communication um, and how it can help your marriage and how you can live a purposeful life by making sure that you are communicating openly, that you are an open book and you are on the same page. So with that, let's welcome Erica to the show. Erica, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much, Tom, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you today? I'm well. Um, I'm very excited because, like I said, I really wanted to dive deep because at the moment, I think there are a lot of people who have questions around relationships. Um, we know that there's a really high level of divorce rate and single yeah. families and single parents, and it's really quite heartbreaking. Um, as you know, I, 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 my full-time job is a math lecturer, so I deal with students. And just hearing their stories sometimes, you you actually start to just feel your heart break you start to tear up you know like the stuff they go through at such a young age so i really want to kind of dive deep with this stuff so um yeah very excited yes <laughs> i am too i'm very i'm very excited and you know what uh, uh, surprisingly one of the things that you just mentioned is uh the divorce rate so statistics say that you know um, people who get married they have like a 53 percent of getting divorced and being a relationship and a communications coach i would love to help people decrease that divorce rate and increase healthier marriages and so that that's one of my um life uh, missions when it comes to my coaching practice wow so erica talk to me about this mission how did you find this mission so that's a great question so I've always been a natural listener uh, with people and people have always naturally come to me and ask me advice when it comes to relationships, especially like my girlfriend saying, hey, I'm having this problem with my boyfriend and I just want to know how can I communicate my needs to him or hey, my um, wife, she isn't um, the same anymore and I just want to know how you know, I can um, spruce up the romance in our lives because it just seems like, you know, the connection is no longer there. And so with my listening skills and giving people advice, I um, had a uh, aha moment. And I said within myself, you know what, so many people are coming to me asking me questions. I really think I have something on my hands. And I was watching Alana Vincent on um, Fix My Life. And, you know, I just saw her asking people questions and I just saw the people that people were getting breakthroughs and um, they were starting to become more clear about what it is that they wanted in life. And after that episode, watching that, watching that TV episode, I felt like, you know what, I can do that. So I decided that I had wanted to become a life coach. Well, to be quite honest, you know, it was a little scary to think about starting a business. I mean, I was fearful for at least three years. I sat on my hands and I just sat on the couch and I was just like, no, I just think that's a little too much for me. But then one day I got the courage. I was like, you know, I'm tired of being afraid. I want to have the impact on people's lives because there are so many people who need me and I want to use my gifts. And so in January of uh, 2017, uh, no, 16, I actually started my business and I've just been hitting the uh, pavement by running and just helping people, whether if that's coaching them, whether if that's having workshops or uh, speaking at a speaking engagement. And let me just say, I love what I do. I love the results that my clients are getting. I mean, just the latest client uh, testimonial that I received was thank you for the push. And I just think it's so important, you know, for coaches to really support their clients, to encourage them and not to like push them off the cliff or anything, but just to give them a little nudge and just say, I believe in you and I believe that you can do this. Mm, yeah, that is very powerful. Absolutely. So in terms of relationships and communication, let's, let's, let's actually dive deep there. So 
like you said, a lot of the times you find that people are struggling. And I think part of the problem with that is the fact that there's no formal education around, oh, how to have a happy relationship, how to have a blissful marriage. You never get really taught that. What you have are just some reference points that you have picked up along the way as you were growing up, whether that's from your parents, your grandparents, your aunties, your uncles, people you observed, the TV stuff you saw, Disney, I don't know, all right? So whatever you picked up, those are your reference points. So what you find is that, yes, you don't have any education. You don't have anybody who's broken this down into a formula or into a series of steps, but you just have certain reference points and you're left on your own devices. Like you got to go and you figure this out. And most people struggle, but they keep it quiet because if they go ahead and they admit something to that, they feel that they have failed because they were supposed to figure this out, but they didn't. And they feel that they have failed. So do you find that that's true? And what are some of the reasons for why they're failing? Yeah, I definitely do believe that people um, internalize that, you know, uh, when their relationships aren't working out, they feel like they failed. I would say, you know, one of the reasons why they feel like they have failed is because they're not willing to be vulnerable with the person and actually talk uh, with people. I think that, you know, um, vulnerability is a key factor when it comes to being transparent with someone and letting someone know exactly how it is that you're feeling and not bottling things up. And that's the second thing is that, you know, when people bottle things up, their emotions can overtake them and they are only going off of their own perception as opposed to what kind of conversation you can have and let some like let your wife know exactly how it is that you feel and what it is that you want to see in your marriage or let's say you know you're having a difficult time and you're starting to get cold feet being engaged right and by that you know you probably someone can internalize and just say well I'm scared and I feel like I'm failing because I'm getting cold feet whereas if they were willing to talk with someone and they were willing to talk to their fiance they can actually see that you know if when one person is usually feeling one way the other person is feeling the same way and what better way can two people actually come together have a conversation and just come up with a strategy as far as like how it is that they can improve their life or how it is that they can um, improve their relationship mm, yeah yeah very true and to be honest with you I know um, from my experience there's I've been I've been married for for a fairly long time and um, over the, the the first part of our marriage my wife you know did say to me you know just talk to me you don't talk to me just talk to me and the biggest problem I found was I didn't know how to talk to her I actually found it really difficult to put my feelings my emotions into words and explain to her what I was feeling and I found it really quite hard to be be vulnerable like you said like you have to be vulnerable right so I found it really hard to be vulnerable because I was I was finding it really difficult to just make sense of what I'm feeling in the first place and then put it into words and explain it to her. This is what I'm feeling and this is what I'm going through and this is what I'm thinking, etc. And I found it quite, quite challenging. Have you come across other people who find the same thing that they find it quite challenging to, to voice it, to put things into words about how they're feeling and what they're thinking? Oh yeah. Uh, one of the um, exercises that I like to uh, encourage my clients with is write a letter you know, cut out some time for yourself, whether if that's 30 minutes or an hour, and write a letter to the person who you want to express your feelings because, you know, sometimes when we uh, talk to someone, we can feel anxious or we can feel afraid that that person won't accept how it is that you are feeling, right? And by that, that just like makes you just hit that brick wall and it's like you can't move forward. Whereas if you wrote a letter to the person, then the person can actually read it. They can come, you know, to their own conclusions or be able to process that. And then you guys can say, you know what, hey, in the middle of the week around after dinner time, I would like for us to uh, talk about this. And so that would help open up the dialogue. And, you know, let's say your wife, you know, if let's say 
uh, you are my client, I encourage you to write a letter to your wife. And then, you know, you scheduled again on a Wednesday night and said after dinner, let's go ahead and talk about this. And then you gave your wife the letter the day before. And then on Wednesday, your wife can read the letter. And then, you know, she could say, when you were saying this, like, you know, tell me a little bit more about that. And then you can uh, feel more at ease because you're feeling like, you know, your wife is being receptive to you. You feel like your wife is um, understanding you. And then she's asking you for feedback. Now, those are three key things. And so I just think that, you know, that helps people to um, understand uh, that it's okay to feel anxious and understand that it's okay to get those feelings out. And one of the tools, again, that I encourage my clients with is to write a letter to the person. Mm. Yeah, I love that, by the way. That's a good strategy. Um, but I also had a bit of hesitation. I, I'll be completely vulnerable and open here. Um, I also had a bit of a hesitation because I, I, I almost thought that if I said something, sometimes it will upset her and she will get angry and then it's going to make situation a lot worse. And you always have that perception, right? Like if, if, if I open this up, like things are okay now, but it's, it's going to get worse. If I say something, it's going to get even worse right? You don't right. know how the other person's going to react. So what, what sort of ground rules can we establish? Because I know you, 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 you talked about a little bit before about not being defensive, right? So I think yeah. that, that's a good one. That's a good one. But what other sort of ground rules can you establish before you start that conversation in order to make sure that the person who wants to share their feelings and, and their thoughts, they can feel safe in doing so? Yeah. And, and, and the perfect word that you said is safe. You know, um, before you set, before you uh, have a conversation, again, like set the ground rules and just say, you know, hey, I want to share with you how it is that I feel. Um, please don't take uh, this as an attack against you. Let me just uh, share how it is that I feel just so I can get this out. And so we can actually have a conversation and, um, you know, ask and also to ask, you know, like your wife. Like, um, please let me know that you're actually being understanding to um, what it is that I'm saying, because I love you. I don't want our marriage to diminish at any point, but I actually want to improve our marriage. And by that, you know, your wife, I'm sure, would be understanding toward that. Mm, yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I think uh, for people in the audience, this, is, this uh, could be quite quite an important thing because um, what we did was we said, well, we, we will be open with each other. And in that time when we were being open with each other, we like, that's, that's like the, the timeout zone, right? Like you're not allowed to get angry. You're allowed to, what you need to do is you need to really try and understand what the other person's going through um, in that timeout. And um, you, you, you need to just talk about it. That's all you're allowed. You're not allowed to get angry. You're just about, to, you're allowed to talk, just not allowed to get angry. So I think that was, that was a big one uh, as well. So we, we tried doing that where we just like, okay, fine, we'll share things, but the other person is, has to be understanding. So they can't just be like, wait, what are you saying? It's just crazy. Okay, where did that even come from? So you can't right. do any of that stuff, all right? Because that takes you in a completely different direction. You don't want to get that. Um, but the other thing you said was really important is the fact that, you know, there's, there's no sort of strain on the relationship. I mean, there's something that we need to discuss. There's something we need to talk about, but the relationship itself is not under any strain. Okay. Because right. I think that puts both parties on the defensive straight away. So you need to say, well, the relationship is say, I still love you. Right. It's your exact words. I still love you, but we do need to discuss these things because there's something that, you know, is going on. We need to talk about it. Right. And one of the things that I would um, like to remind us is that you know when we have active listening skills so we're not just hearing someone in the sense of oh I hear what you're saying but when you actively listen to the person that you love you're truly trying to understand them and one of the exercises that I love to do with my clients is you know let's say you know you say something to your wife and your wife would say so what I heard you saying is Mm -hmm. And with that key that that really lets you know that, you know, you are being heard. And let's say that you did not mean that. And then if you did not mean that you can so lovingly correct her, not in the sense of correct her by pointing a finger, but in the sense of, hey, no, I, this is what I meant. 
And then, you know, you guys can have that loving conversation. And then it just puts things more at ease with active listening skills. Hmm. Well, this is your area of expertise, Erica. You, you are a relationship and communications coach. So talk to us a little bit more. I like that. I really like that. So can you talk to us a little bit more about in terms of your communication skills, when you're having that difficult conversation, what, what kind of um, skills do you need to be using? So in terms of when you talk about active listening, what other things do we need to be doing to make sure that conversation takes place in a safe environment? Um, I would say being intentional, you know, with your words and being descriptive and, you know, uh, going into detail instead of just being a roundabout type of communicator, you know, say exactly what it is that you want, say exactly what it is that you need instead of letting um, people assume what they think you need. Because if you don't clearly communicate by being intentional with your words or being intentional with your body language by hug hugging your wife, and you know, uh, your wife might like love hugs, and then you know, you're being intentional with your actions by hugging her or being intentional with your words, for example, by saying, I love you, you know, and that person really is able to be receptive to that, especially if that's their, you know, way of communicating. And so, um, you know, it's just so important being intentional with your words, being intentional with your actions, and it goes a long way and it adds major, major value in your relationships, it adds value in your marriages. And so, yeah, I would say being intentional with your words and action. So when you say being intentional with your words, um, can you break that down? What, what are you specifically referring to here? Yeah, so more specifically is, is that if you know, so if you know your um, wife doesn't like to be told shut up, you would say shut up, right? You would just say, you know, hey, um, right now is not a good time for us to talk about this. Like, can we schedule another time um, after dinner or when we wake up? Uh, in the morning, you know, and so by doing that, it just, you know, let your wife know that, hey, like now is not a good time. Um, I have a business meeting. I'm on an interview or, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so being intentional with your words is, you know, communicating in a loving way rather than being harsh with, you know, the person that you love. Right. So what I'm hearing you say is the fact that the words that we use. Yes can generate certain emotions in the other person. Yes. So we have to be very careful with how and what words we use. Yes. Right. Yes, okay. we, we, we have to be extremely careful because you want to communicate love and you want to communicate love by the words that you say. And so with you and your wife, you might just say, you know, hey, you're beautiful or hey, I love you. Or, hey, you did a really good job um, by cooking us dinner. And I really like that chicken and rice dish that you made the other day, right? And so that communicates love because, you know, how much effort it would take, you know, for your wife to cook or even for you to cook. But when you communicate and say, hey, you did an awesome job on that chicken and rice, it just lets the person know, like, hey, you know, they really, that my husband or my wife really loves me. Mm, yeah. So I guess we're, we're, we're taking the conversation um, to, to the other side now. So not just the difficult conversation, but actually the, the good ones. So we can talk about there as well. So what kind of language patterns, what kind of words do you think will, uh, will be useful to have in those sort of conversation? Because here's another thing, like we talked about before, right? You are only left to figure this stuff out by yourself. Okay. So if you start using cheesy lines from Disney movies, it doesn't always work. <laughs> so right. what, what, what are the sort of um, words and language patterns can be used to have those beautiful conversations? Yeah, so, you know, uh, number one, I would uh, probably ask, if you are my client, I would ask you, you know, to have a conversation and ask your wife, like, when I, what, what way can I really communicate to you? Like, what do you really like hearing me say to you, mm. you know? And your wife can say, oh, well, I really like it when um, you say I do a good job or I really like it when, you know, you say that I'm smart and I'm intelligent. I really like it when um, you just uh, validate me and just let me know that I am important. And by asking questions, um, again, by saying, well, asking, 
you know, um, what do you like when I, what, what do you like when I say to you, sorry. And so that, that, that's really helpful to people. I love that. And you just hit the nail on the head. You know, if you want to know what the other person wants to hear, just ask them, right? Yeah. How easy is that? <laughs> just ask them. I love that. Yeah, because every, everybody, everybody isn't the same. We are all created uniquely. And since we're created uniquely, we need to be uniquely communicated. Now, that's a good blog post right there. Mm. Um, <laughs> and so with that, it's, it's just like, you know, communicate to me that I want to be communicated to. Communicate to me the way that resonates with me and makes me feel empowered and makes me feel courageous that I can do anything or communicate the love that I need. Because, you know, husbands and wives, we need to understand is that we're all uniquely created and we all uniquely receive communication, especially um, within an important relationship like that. Mm, yeah. Uh, so I, I turn to you for people in the audience. When was the last time you asked your partner, your wife, whoever, your loved one, your significant other about how they would like you to communicate to them? Do you even know? If you don't know, maybe that's the one thing you should be doing. So Erica, I guess we're kind of, um, you know, slowly creeping towards the, the languages of love here almost, aren't we? So let's go there. Let's talk about that. So you obviously, you know, um, know about the languages of love. So do you believe they actually work, first of all? Yes, I, I definitely believe that they uh, actually work. And again, most importantly, it's about asking you know, your husband, your wives, your fiancés, or even boyfriends or girlfriends, those type of uh, questions like, you know, what do you like? What do you like what, what I do for you? You know, uh, what do you like to hear? Um, you know, do you like when I touch you? I mean, different things like that. So it's just really important to, again, ask the questions. Because otherwise than that, you're just assuming in your own thoughts and you're just saying, well, I think they like this. So I think they like that. Rather than having an in-depth conversation and asking them those questions. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for people in the audience, if you don't know, you should totally go and check this out. I think this is absolutely amazing. There's a concept called the five languages of love. Um, I, I, I'm not going to remember all of them. So Erica is going to help me here. Okay. So one of them is um, acts of service. So where you actually do something for the other person. Um, the, another one is gifts. So where you actually buy them gifts and give them gifts. Um, another one is physical affection. So you actually give them physical affection. So that's, you know, touching, hugging, etc. cetera. Um, another one is, uh, quality time. Sorry. Quality, quality time. time. Yes. That's the one quality time, a big one, by the way, which people overlook quality time. Yeah. Spending good quality time with each other. And the final one, you're going to help me out here. So, um, acts of service. So there's words of affirmation. There's words of affirmation. Yeah, I think that's the one I was missing. Sorry. Yeah, words of affirmation. Um, so that's, that's in, you know, saying good stuff to them. So, you know, uh, I love you. You're amazing. You're beautiful. All that stuff. Okay. So five languages of love. Okay. Um, and uh, what you find is that people can be very different. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, my wife, her, you know, language of love is acts of service. So I, if, if I do something for her, that's like she feels love. That's, that's her way of receiving love. Okay. That's the way she communicates. Uh, mine's different. I'm a hugger. Okay. So, <laughs> so for me, it's, it's like, you know, like physical affection. That's, that's a big one for me. Um, but everybody's different. So my question to you guys, for people in the audience is, do you know your language of love? And do you know the language of love of your partner? If you don't, then maybe you need to sit down and figure this out. Okay. Uh, and there's like quizzes and questionnaires and all sorts of cool stuff you can go online and find out and you can do that. Um, there are books on it. There are articles on it. It's, it's huge. Okay. So if you've never heard of it, go check it out. It's a game changer. Like seriously, ever since that me and my, my wife discovered it and we're just like, oh, right. So you're a hugger and I just got to take the trash out. Well, we can do that. <laughs> That's sorted. Right. So it's, it's really important. It really helps you. Okay. So I, I highly encourage you guys to go and check that out. Yes, definitely. Um, like you said, the five love languages are a game changer. 
I mean, I remember uh, reading this book over uh, 10 years ago and I was just like, wow, this is amazing. Mm. Um, and at that time, you know, I was single, but yet I wanted to learn more about, you know, how people work and how relationships work and different things like that. And so it was a total game changer for me. And I would say uh, one of my love languages is spending quality time with me. I love when my husband is able to, you know, um, not have very long working days and we're able to, you know, go out on dates or just have a simple movie night and just, you know, eating some popcorn and just, mm. you know, drinking on some juice or whatever and just having a, a good time together because I value uh, relationships and spending um, quality time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so important to know your own language of love as well, right? Yes. Yeah. Because it's obviously important to know the language of love of your partner or husband or wife or whatever. Right. Uh, but you need to know yours, like how you receive love as well. How do you communicate? And I think that's really important because otherwise you, you, you will have a gap, right? So you, you're doing all this stuff for the other person. They feel loved and that's great, but you will have this gap within you. And then that gap can only be filled if the other person is speaking, that's quotation marks, speaking your language of love. Yes, for sure. Yes. Um, yeah. And again, it's, it's all about, you know, asking uh, questions and, you know, setting that time apart for your relationship, because I think our many times, you know, we can be in a hustle and a bustle and we're just having these uh, busy schedules and just saying to ourselves, we don't have time for that. And, you know, when people are able to uh, carve out time, you know, for each other, then they can discover new things about themselves and mm -hmm. they can discover what their love languages are and actually improve their uh, relationship and to create a, a new intimacy in their relationship and a new level of uh, romance in their relationship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and to be honest with you, this is something that uh, we started in January 2017, around that time, where we consciously said, okay, so our weeknights are pretty much just like a photocopy of another photocopy of another photocopy where, you know, you finish off from work, you come home, um, you sort of the kids, you, you do everything else, washing the dishes and tidying up and all that stuff. And after that, you just crash on the sofa and just like, right, Netflix, boom, bang it on. And then you watch a, you know, episode or two and you're just like, right, bedtime, off you go. Um, so we decided, no, we, we, we're not spending actual time together. That's not spending time together. That's just us watching TV. That's not spending time together. So let's do something about it. So we, we then planned the whole week where we said, okay, fine. Monday night, reading night or learning night, right? So we sit down, we read a book or we you know, watch a video or something, we do that. You, you can do your own thing, but it's a learning night. And then afterwards, we sit down, we talk about what we learned, what we read, etc. cetera. Um, let's say Wednesday night. So Wednesday night is a games night, right? Okay, so no TV, nothing. We're going to play board games. We're going to play Monopoly, and I'm going to lose every single time. Let's just decide this, how it works. Um, or, you know, anything else, which is games night, okay? Um, Friday night, date night, okay? Just nothing happens on a Friday. Everything else gets canceled. It's just date night. Um, Saturday night is a movie night. We order a takeaway. We, we watch a movie. So we put a schedule in place. We both agreed on it and we've been following that. Okay. More or less, right? It, it's not perfect. We don't follow it perfectly all the time, but it's more or less there. And I can tell you that since then it's been completely different, completely different. But most people think that, you know, having a schedule or something is, it's too rigid. But I think a schedule actually helps you. Yeah. And, and again, remember what we talked about earlier, being intentional with our actions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you guys are being intentional. I'm quite sure you are discovering things new about each other. You're discovering things new about yourself. And it just makes your relationships and the family so much more fulfilling instead of boredom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I've, we've been playing um, games and things like that. And then we, we play different games. So um, in one of the games, you have to ask questions to each other. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and some of the questions we asked were, well, what's your biggest challenge right now? Or, you know, what, what, what's, what's your, um, what's the dream that you, you, you wanted to follow, but it just hasn't worked out. And how does that make you feel? Right. Um, mm -hmm. What are you struggling with right now the most? And things like that, which to be honest with you, most of the time you won't talk about. Right. That's so true. You won't, you won't talk about those things because 
the um, situation hasn't actually been created. You know, we can go through life and have life experiences and we talk about those life experiences as they come. But, you know, until you ask uh, questions, which is so powerful, uh, then you're a a actually able to uh, understand each other on a different level. Mm, yeah, absolutely. But the cool thing was that it wasn't because if you sit down and say, okay, fine. So what are you struggling with right now? The other person's like, uh, so <laughs> what we did was because we, we were just, we turned it into a game. It was just a game that we were playing. Yes. Um, it was an informal setting, like the, the atmosphere, the ambience, the, everything was just like, it was all informal and it was just a game. So, um, we had some laughs and there were also sometimes we're just like, wow, okay. I didn't really know that, you know? Nice. Yeah, that, that's, that's very powerful. And I'm really glad that, you know, you guys are implementing so many uh, strategies in your family and your relationship and you're loving intentionally, you're loving, you know, with your words and the things that you're doing. And, you know, you guys are actually growing together as a family instead of being stagnant and just going whatever life uh, throws at you. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's quite easy to lose yourself in the day-to-day -day stuff with your work, with kids, with, you know, you got bills to pay, you got, um, you know, stuff to do, catch up with friends, like there's so much going on. But unless you intentionally carve out time and you say, this is what we are both going to agree on, we're going to stick with this and that's it, then otherwise it, you, you never find the time. It's never going to come to you. You have to make it happen. Right. That that's so true. We are we we as human beings we're just so powerful and we really need to step within our um within our power because there is so much uh to do and you know if we apply the right tools, the right strategies and the right principles, we can have again a more fulfilling life and we can have a more fulfilling uh relationship with our husbands, wives, boyfriend, girlfriends, family, whatever the case may be, we can be more fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Erica, do you find that when you are working with clients and they discover all this stuff and they implement it, and, and here's the key thing, implementing it, right? Like actually taking action, not just like listening to it. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Actually going ahead and taking action. That when they start to take action, um, they gain momentum. Like oh yeah. The, yeah, they want to do more. Yes, they, they gain uh, momentum, they uh, want to do more, and they are uh, reflective and filled with uh, gratitude, and, you know, new doors are opening for them, and with the new doors opening for them, and just saying to themselves, like, wow, I would have never known this until I was ready to take the leap of faith, and I was actually ready to do the things, and by me doing these things, you know, I see life from a different uh, perspective, and you know, I want other people to feel like I'm feeling, right? And, and so, you know, with that strategy and, uh, again, with gaining that momentum and they just see how, you know, important growth is and then they just are hungry for more. And by them being hungry for more, you know, they actually want to reach out to other people and help them, um, whether if it's with their new passion, whether it's with them, you know, discovering, you know, relationship coaching actually works and referring someone to me. But most importantly, it's all about, again, the momentum growing and actually continually to do those things that they have been implementing in their lives. Mm, yeah. So Erica, since you've actually started the coaching and everything else yourself now, and you're helping lots of clients, how have you grown and how has your relationship grown as a result? Uh, the way that I've grown is I learn something new from a different perspective about life each and every single day. Mm. And with that, I can help my clients um, at a greater capacity. Um, some things maybe I had uh, shared before, but because I have a new perspective and I've gained, my, I've gained momentum myself, I can share with someone, here's a better way of doing this, or let's try this exercise. Or I believe if we role play, this would actually help you. Now, when it comes to my own personal uh, relationships, people actually see that I'm happier, I'm more lively, and they're just saying, hey, Erica, you know, I, I knew for you to be a happy person, but it just seems like you just have a, a, a new joy or something. Like, this just seems like something that, you know, I've never seen before. 
And so it just uh, encourages me to keep on going. It encourages me to inform people exactly what it is that I'm doing. How did I get there? What is it that I did? And so, I mean, life is just grand. Awesome. Awesome. So Erica, in your personal relationship, what are some of the practices you have that allow you to actually have that blissful relationship? Yeah. So, uh, again, spending quality times with the people who I love and my friends, acquaintances, and also going to uh, different networking events. Um, I find that, you know, authentically having a conversation with someone and letting someone know that I'm actually uh, listening to them. So, for example, let's say I'm in a conversation with someone, you know, I put my cell phone down, okay, my, my cell phone is off, and I, I look at the person in their eyes, and I let them know I'm actually hearing what it is that uh, they are uh, saying, and you know, always wanting to remain in contact with someone. And then every once in a while, you know, checking on that person, just saying, hey, you know, it's a, such a pleasure to meet you the other week. How are things going? And that really can, uh, that really uh, creates a new connection uh, for me and that person. And quite um, frankly, you know, when I'm talking to the person, I'm always learning something new, not only about themselves, them, but I'm learning something new about myself. And, and so it just makes life more fulfilling, not only for me, but for them. I, I just think that, you know, when we actually uh, share information, when we share our stories, when, when we share the things that we are actually going through, I think that, you know, it's just a learning opportunity. And, and so that, that, just, that just makes it worthwhile having those relationships, spending quality time, and having those effective communication skills that I just shared with you. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So do you find that your clients mostly kind of struggle with, say, a few common things? Or is it quite diverse, the different areas that they're struggling with in their relationships? Uh, one of the things that uh, some of my clients uh, struggle with the most is um, just being vulnerable and, and being uh, transparent, you know, uh, even with themselves, you know, I think that uh, some of us are in these shells and uh, we don't want to come out this shell, but we know we need help and we don't want to look weak. And, you know, by reaching out to someone, whether if it's myself or whether if it's the person that they love, that they, that they realize is that it's okay to be vulnerable with someone you can trust, obviously. You don't want to be vulnerable with just anybody, but you want to be vulnerable with somebody that you can trust. And again, uh, with uh, transparency, you know, uh, when someone shares their story and then they just have that aha moment, like, wow, that's something that I'm actually going through. And then when the other person is actually able to uh, be transparent uh, with them, and it's just like, wow, it, it creates a um, bond. So I would just say uh, being vulnerable and also to being honest with yourself. Um, you know, uh, sometimes we could just uh, make things seem like, oh, it's, everything's okay. I'm fine. I'm okay. But really, we're not. And, and so I just think that we have to be honest with ourselves as well. Yeah. And, and like I shared before, I think being vulnerable is a big one because I found it quite hard, um, you know, with, uh, with, with my wife um, to be open and vulnerable. But I think it, it's, it, it, it could be the fact that you have your own personal de defenses up, right? Um, in my case, it was just the fact that I just didn't know how to word it. I just didn't know how to put my feelings into words. And it took me a, a while to, to be able to get to the stage where I could say, yeah, you know, I, I, I can share this with you because I now understand what, what, I'm, what I'm feeling and what I'm going through and I can actually put it into words and it will actually make sense, right? <laughs> so yeah. it, it took me a while to get there and I think that's another thing I guess as well is being patient um, yeah. to, to allow the other person the time and the space where they are then able to openly communicate with you and not pressurizing them into say, you're not doing this, what's wrong with you? Right. And, you know, just to add uh, to your point, I would also say uh, practicing, you know, I think that sometimes we just have this ideology like, oh, I have to get it right the first time. But if you're willing just to take the first step and as you're willing to take that first step, then you 
um, are willing to see, you know, what opportunities that that can bring, not only for you, but for the uh, relationship. And so I always, you know, encourage people, let's just practice, you know, because practice is going to help you to get the experience upon the experience that you will be able to get the results that you are looking for. Mm, yeah, yeah. So in, in all of this, I think th what, what we've established is that how you communicate. Yes when you communicate and your intention and your purpose behind your communication are super important because otherwise it's just going to, it's just going to unfold as chaos. Yes. So which true. Is, yeah. Which is what we find, right? Like most of the time you find people struggling and then, you know, you heard that sober and so and split up or they're divorced or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and usually, you know, when, you know, people come to me about divorce is pretty much done deal, you know, mm -hmm. but if they were able to maintain their uh, marriage, uh, then they could have possibly avoided, you know, getting a divorce. And it's not to say that someone can't have a, a healthy and fulfilling life after getting a divorce, but it just means that, you know, if we were able to do preventative care, mm. right? We were able to do preventative care. We could have possibly avoided that divorce. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like you said, prevention is always better than cure, right? <laughs> awesome. Yes. Fantastic. All right, Erica, uh, tell us where people can go to find out more about you, about your coaching um, and um, all the other good stuff that you're up to. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so people can find more out more about me at um, vinelifecoaching.com. And if people would like to email me, you can email me at info at vinelifecoaching.com. Also, I am on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And, you know, I would just really love to connect uh, with different people who want to improve their relationships, who want to improve their communication skills uh, with uh, goal setting, because, you know, now is the time to do something about it instead of sitting on our hands or avoiding conversations or avoiding things that we know that could actually be beneficial for us. And so I just love what I do. Uh, my clients are getting uh, major results. As a matter of fact, the latest uh, client testimonial I received was thank you for the push. And, you know, it was in a, in a loving way. It wasn't in a uh, malicious way by any means. But just to say, you know, to you that, you know, I would just love to uh, support you. Awesome. Um, and Erica, is there anything we can help you with right now? Um. No, not really. I really enjoyed our uh, conversation. I really enjoyed, you know, uh, just talking about different principles when it comes to relationships and communications. Um, I just want to thank you for, you know, your time and thank you for the uh, conversation and just thank you for sharing your story because I believe that it's so important for us to share our stories with each other and then learn from each other. Absolutely. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Our conversation, a conversation, conversation, can't even speak right now. Uh, <laughs> too excited. Um, our conversation with Erica Halston. And I think this, this is really important. We discussed some really important stuff and both me and Erica, we shared openly. I shared with you my own personal story um, to, to just help you guys. That's what we're here for. We want to serve you guys. We want to share these ideas with you because we know it will help you because it's helped us right? That's why we're sharing this stuff with you. So make sure that you pass it on. That's all we ask. Okay. Just make sure you share it with other people who you think can benefit from this. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your brother or sister. Maybe you just want to send it to your spouse or your loved one so they can listen to this conversation. And, and maybe you can sit together and listen to it together, but whatever it is, just pay it forward. That's the biggest compliment you can give me and Erica. Because at the end of the day, these are the exact things that, like I said, I shared my own personal stuff. These are the exact steps that we have taken to make sure that we have got a blissful and successful and happy relationship. So if you want to get there, there you go. You got the, the, the road ahead of you, okay? Go for it. Um, but also some really important stuff came out of this in terms of being intentional with your communication, making sure that you think before you speak. Absolutely being 
you know open to to receiving feedback and not just being super defensive because i think a lot of people do that we get into that mode where we put up the defenses straight away because it's not my fault it's not me it's all you and that's where it starts to fall apart so you need to create a safe environment a, a, a nurture, nurturing and loving environment in which you can have those conversations it might be difficult but if you have that environment and you know that you feel safe and the other person feels safe then it's easy to share and that's where you want to be that's where the real gold is in that relationship okay and that's how you're going to grow that's where the growth is so why wouldn't you do that okay so i'll highly encourage you all i'll challenge you even to go ahead and have that conversation okay set up a time make sure you write the letter i mean erica said that amazing you know a technique where you can just write a letter to to your to the other person and you can give them the letter and then have a conversation to follow up on that how beautiful is that so i challenge you to go ahead and have the conversation we talked about the five languages of love okay i can't remember them now but there, there's five we talked about them um find out what yours is find out what your spouse's or, or your partner's language of love is and then talk about how you can actually show them that how you can share it with them that's super critical as well. So a lot of good stuff came out of this. Make sure you take notes. I always take notes. So I'm going to follow up on a bunch of stuff. Make sure you do too. Apart from that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below because it helps us grow and makes uh, this, this channel something special where we have a community of people who believe in the message of achieving holistic success in their life. We have a community of people who believe in achieving holistic life mastery, who want to master every area of their life, their relationship, their finances, their business, their careers, their health, everything, their spirituality. So if you're one of them, hit the subscribe button down below. It keeps you updated with all the future videos as well that we'll be launching. And finally, it enters you in the monthly competition where you can win access to my free, well, free access to my course <laughs> on networking strategies and how to connect and build relationships with the top thought leaders and experts in the world. With that, guys, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Erica, thank you so much for coming on. This was an awesome conversation. Oh, thank you, Tal. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Guys, stay awesome. Hustle hard. I'll catch you in the next one.